quad word there's a new astrox 100zz coming soon and it looks amazing we'll take a look at that 100zz when it's out but let's look at the current version of the 100zz and compare it with the astrox 99 and 77. so very quickly here's some measured specs for all three rackets in terms of shaft diameters we can see the 100zz is clearly the slimmest at 6.3 millimeters with its hyper slim shaft whilst the 77 is thickest at 7.2 millimeters lengthwise both the 77 and 99 99's shafts were similar at 21.5 cm whilst the 100ZZ was a cm shorter at 20.5. We now look at the frame thickness and surprisingly the 100ZZ comes out thickest at 10.5mm whilst the Astrox 99 was thinnest at 9.9mm and the 77 was somewhere in the middle with a pretty standard 10.1mm. Frame size however were quite similar for all three rackets with exactly the same height of 23.5cm but the Astrox 99 was slightly wider at 18.5cm whilst the 77 and 100ZZ was a touch slimmer at 183 Both the 77s and 99 99s only have the top half of the rackets recessed, whilst the 100ZZ have a full recessed frame profile, which will help immensely with swing speed. Finally, the 100ZZ also has a slightly longer handle at 17.5cm, whilst the 77 and 99 only with 16.5cm. So here are the measurements for all three rackets in comparison to each other, and here they are compared to other rackets within the Astrox series, including second and current generation 88 Pros. On the visual side of things, I really, really love the glitter and holographic Astrox 100ZZ decals on the frame of the racket. Not sure if the footage is doing it any justice, but the colour is absolutely amazing and you all know I'm a sucker for matte finishing on rackets as I think they just look super classy and incredible. So the hyper slim shaft really stand out at how thin they are, so they look absolutely amazing. If we then take a look at the Astrox 99, and this is a second generation color scheme in purple and gold, and coming from the orange version previously. I have to be honest and say I'm not a big fan of this color scheme, but the few bits of red on the gold does look very, very good. Finally, we look at the Astrox 77, and this is the older color scheme as well, and this one just screams, you can't see me. Or you can. With the super bright neon yellow and the pearlescent blue and green finish on the racket, it looks good. I like it. So let's go to the hitting part of the rackets and we start with the 100ZZ. Immediately I was surprised at how easy it was to play with considering the 100ZZ is supposed to be the flagship crazy super stiff, super head heavy sledgehammer. Instead, it turned out to be just an amazing super speedy hammer, which is pretty cool and amazing in itself. Besides being easy to play with, the racket itself is actually nice to play with too, and I could feel the shaft was pliable enough to generate power with shorter swings and squeeze actions without needing a big long swing. Considering the hyper slim shaft is a fully solid shaft instead of the traditional hollow one, this was pretty impressive indeed. So the swings from the 100ZZ was buttery smooth and this comes from the fully recessed frame profile which really aids and reduces drag from the frame and helps it slice through the air as fast as possible. However, in saying that, I did felt that the sweet spot of the 100ZZ was ever so slightly smaller compared to say my Arcsaber 10 because of its slimmer frame. Remember I said that the 100ZZ's frame width is measured at 18.3cm, my Arcsaber 10's frame width was 19cm so it has a bigger frame and sweet spot in that sense. So if I was late to the shuttle or was sent the wrong way and having to really scramble for the shuttle, I found it was slightly more unforgiving in that sense. If you were ready for a shot and was able to apply good timing to it, the 100ZZ feels amazing and will reward you with tons of solid feel and good power. So another bit I'd like to point out is although the 100ZZ is fast, I still struggle slightly in all out defensive situations, especially when pure reaction and needing short sharp action shots in return. But this is to be expected from a stiff super head heavy racket, it actually performed miles better in that regard compared to previous generations of flagship head heavy rackets. So with the longer handle, I just move my grip positions 
up towards the shaft of the racket when things get a little bit too fast to compensate for that. So pretty amazing racket to play with alongside some very, very nice design and decals. This one gets a thumbs up for me. Let's now look at the Astrox 99 and let me be honest here and say this is by far the most demanding racket to play with, even compared with the previous generation's Astrox and 88s. The 99 was stiffer and coupled with more head weight. This one really felt like the actual sledgehammer. This actually explains why Kenta Momota went from the 3U version to the 4U version midway through the 2019 season, because he said he felt tired and sluggish later in his matches. I had previously tried the original orange version of the 99 and I tried very hard to like it, but I just couldn't. It just didn't want to work with me or I just couldn't work with it. I really gave it a good go at liking this one too and it was exactly the same. This thing is demanding to play with and as someone who isn't physically very powerful, I felt I wasn't able to maximize the potential of the 99. Even with the added stiffness and head weight, I didn't feel I was able to extract more from my smashes with this big boy compared to say the current generations of the 88 Pros. In terms of net shots and lifts, this thing is really accurate and I believe this comes from the added stiffness that this racket brings. I can see why the Astrox 99 was favoured as a singles racket and don't remember seeing any of the top end doubles players on the world circuit playing with the 99s, with many opting to go for the 88s or even the 100ZZ, as they are more forgiving. To be honest, I'm actually quite excited after seeing the 100ZZ and then the development of the second generation 88s to the current 88 Pros. I cannot wait to see the latest generation of 99. If it went in the same direction and the design philosophy of the 88s, including a fully recessed frame profile plus a more responsive racket in terms of playability, this is going to be one hell of a racket for a lot of players. It might be something that will be launched by Yonex with Kenta Momota very soon as they've been dropping snippets on their YouTube channel recently. I'm very excited, so let's see. So finally we get to the Astrox 77 and this is by far the oldest of the Astrox models. If I remember correctly, this was the very first racket Yonex made for the Astrox series. Let me know in the comments section below if this is correct and if not, what racket was the first Astrox launched by Yonex? Traditionally, Yonex tends to launch a series with a typically mid-high end racket ending with the number 7, before moving up the gears with 8 or 9 or 10. With the Astrox, it was the 77, then 88, 99, 100. The Art Sabers, they went from the 7 to the 10, the 9 and 11. Dora, 7, then 10 and etc. The 7 tends to be a bit more conservative in terms of performance and feel. It's like the feeling out the market as well as the new materials and manufacturing technique that they use. Don't get me wrong, it's a super nice racket to play with, very easy to use and user friendly good power and good speed when you need it as well. But the 77 doesn't have a standout speciality. Its speciality is the ability to be able to do everything well. I would use the example of giving everything a 7 out of 10. Then that's the Astrox 77. Head heaviness, 7 out of 10. Speed, 7 out of 10. Raw power, 7 out of 10. Stiffness, 7 out of 10. You get the drill. It's a steady, solid racket and nothing is poor by any standards but at the same time, nothing is spectacular. Everything is above average. So a seven out of 10 in every single category. So a conservative racket. So it reminds me of the Arc Saber series, which is great at everything, but not a single super spectacular thing that you can think of. The actual spectacular thing about them is actually being good at everything. And that's a skill in itself. So all three rackets that I tested were four U models. If we were to compare all three together, in terms of head heaviness, the 77 is the lighters, then the 100ZZ, then comes the sledgehammer, the 99. For ultimate stiffness, it's exactly the same, with the 77 being more pliable, and then the 100ZZ, which is really responsive and good to play with, then the 99 with incredible stiffness. In terms of speed, I would put the 99 as the slowest racket, then the 77 before ending with the 100ZZ, which is very impressive considering the amount of head weight and and power you have access to with it. So do share this video with your badminton buddies if you found the comparison helpful. So which of the three is your favorite? Let me know in the comment section below and I will see you in the next one.